Speaking of not caring about black people, Bill O'Reilly. Oh, Lord. Folks, the Fox News host the other night, two nights ago, he tried to chastise Colin Kaepernick. Hey, he's written some book, and then he decides to go on his show, actually won the Today Show earlier, then he goes on his book, and he said this about the San Francisco 49er quarterback who's been protesting uh, by kneeling to the national anthem for the purpose of bringing attention to police brutality. So here's my message to Mr. Kaepernick and his sympathizers. No nation is perfect, but American police officers very rarely shoot civilians. The statistics prove it. Also, while there is social injustice and blacks have suffered in this country, most Americans deplore bias and we have seen tremendous improvements in that area. To overhype the few police shootings that do occur and to create hostility toward your own country should be put in a basket of deplorables. Perspective is everything in life. Now, I am going to send Kaepernick a copy of Killing the Rising Sun. I am not confident he will read it. But if he does, he might understand that millions of Americans have given their lives for the cause of freedom. Freedom for blacks in the Civil War. Freedom for everybody in the Revolutionary War. Freedom for Asians and freedom for Europe in World War II and World War I. I do not respect Colin Kaepernick's actions. I think he is wrong in the extreme. And I think his frame of reference about his own country is scant. S-C-A-N-T. And I think that is stupid, S-T-U-P-I-D. Here's the reality. Did Bill O'Reilly just say that millions of Americans gave their lives for the freedom of black folks in the American Revolution? Last I check, black folks were not free during the American Revolution. In fact, last I check, many black folks who first came to this country in 1619 fought for the British in order to gain their freedom. That's a historical fact. Bill, what books are you reading? Because last I checked, 1776, America founded. Uh, Emancipation Proclamation did not come on until 1863, uh, almost 100 years later, Bill. So exactly what black folks were freed during the American Revolution? Oh, then Bill, of course, cited the Civil War. And again, uh, somehow believing that, oh no, they were fighting for the freedom of black people. Really? So please explain to me the, the great compromise of 1877 that entered the period of reconstruction after 12 years that ushered in Jim Crow. You know that deal that was cut where Republican Rutherford B. Hayes became president and Democrats said you gotta pull the federal troops out of the South? See, that's the same history, Bill. So please explain to me again how black folks were freed because if black folks were freed with the Civil War, then that means we would not have had Jim Crow. I mean, we would not have had to go through the Civil Rights Movement. But then, of course, you then have the audacity, the unmitigated gall to actually say that, oh, it was also about freeing black people during World War II. But please explain to me how many black soldiers came back to America and they still had racial hatred. Explain to me the black soldiers who were forced to ride in the back of rail cars when the German POWs were allowed to ride in front of them because of racism in America. See, Bill, you want Colin Kaepernick to read your book about patriotism and real patriotism. No, Bill O'Reilly. The real patriotism is when you're black in America and you fought for a nation even though that nation did not fight for you. That's real patriotism. So imagine those African Americans who fought in the Civil War knowing full well they were not fully free. Imagine the African Americans who fought in World War I and World War II and in the Korean War and the Vietnam War, knowing full well that America was not willing to see them as free. That's actual history. So Bill O'Reilly, damn your book. Colin Kaepernick should not read your book because your book is a joke when it comes to patriotism. So book, Bill, I've got some books for you to read because it's clearly what you have been reading is absolutely nonsensical. So Bill, here's the first one. 
Bloods, Black Veterans of the Vietnam War, an old history by Wallace Terry. You might want to read that book to get the sense what it was like for black soldiers facing bigotry in Vietnam, supposedly fighting against communism when they're still fighting for freedom in America. How about this book, Bill? I never had it made, an autobiography of Jackie Robinson by Jackie Robinson. If you read that book, Bill, you know what you're going to find out? You're going to find out that it was Jackie Robinson who also said in that very book why he did not salute the flag, why he did not uh, uh, stand for the national anthem because he said America has never seen me as truly an American. That's what Jackie Robinson said. By the way, Bill, he was a veteran, served in the Army, but also we had to go through a court-martial in Texas when he chose not to ride at the back of the bus. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that black folks were freed in the American Revolution and the previous wars, so why did he have to ride at the back of the bus in El Paso, Texas. Let's go to the next book, Bill. Patton's Panthers, the African-American 761st Tank Battalion in World War II by Charles Sasser. That details those brothers uh, who were sitting here uh, fighting alongside Patton. Here's another book for you, Bill. American Patriots, the story of blacks in the military from the revolution to Desert Storm by Gail Lumet Buckley. Yes, right, black folks, actual American patriots. Here's another book, Bill, Strength for the Fight, a history of black Americans in the military by Bernard C. Nolte. Something else you should read. But how about this one? Benjamin O. Davis Jr., American, an autobiography, a black man who he went to West Point and they did not speak to him for an entire year while he was at West Point. See, Bill, I thought we were all Americans. I thought we were all free. But you mentioned World War II, which your new book is about. So why don't you read this book called The Double V Campaign, African Americans in World War II by Michael L. Cooper. See, Here's what you don't realize, Bill. The Double V campaign was about fighting for victory abroad and victory at home. It was Robert Abbott, the founder of the Chicago Defender, who also started this when he founded the paper. They picked it up when John Sinstack became publisher of the Chicago Defender. You might want to read Evan McKaylee's book on the Defender, uh, a black paper that changed America, because it was black newspapers who challenged America by saying, hey, how can we fight against uh, the Nazis? How can we fight against fascism? But we somehow, we have racism in America. Bill, you might then learn with the Double B campaign. There was J. Edgar Hoover and the federal government who tried to put those black publishers uh, in jail because they dared to write about the racism that was happening on military bases in America. Oh, I'm sorry, you ran up against a black man who can actually read. How about this book, Bill O'Reilly? The Counter-Revolution of 1776, Slave Resistance and the Origins of the United States by Gerald Horn. In that particular book, you read of those, African, those Africans of descent who had chose to fight for the British because the British promised them their freedom. But Gerald Horn also makes the argument in his book, Bill O'Reilly, that the reason for the American Revolution was because the 13 colonies feared the British were going to outlaw slavery abolish slavery, which was their only income in the United States. Because see, Bill, it was slavery. It was picking cotton that created capitalism in America, it allowed America to become uh, the greatest of uh, a nation when it came financially, not the Industrial Revolution, but it was picking cotton. But I got another book for you, Bill, on the altar of freedom, a black soldier's civil war letters from the front by James Henry Gooding. See, that's another book. I got one more for you, Bill. Buffalo Soldiers, the colored regulars in the United States Army by T.G. Stewart. Also another book, Bill, The Marines of Montford Point, America's First Black Marines by Melton McLaurin. If you can read, Bill, they got an audio book so you can actually listen to them. You actually hear the stories of black soldiers talking about what was, a, what was it like to have a uniform on, to have an American flag on their shoulder, but still face racism in the military. I dare say there has been no person who has been a truer American patriot than an African American who has been willing to fight for this nation when well, the nation would not fight for him and her. That bill is American history. That's the history that Colin Kaepernick is talking about. And so if you want somebody to read your book, why don't you actually read what it's like to be a real patriot. So Colin Kaepernick, if he sends you your book, his book, throw it in the trash and then send him an Amazon gift card to go buy some other books so he can learn what it's like to be black in America, what it's learn how to fight for America, what it's learn to be when you're mega Everest and you fought for America, but you get to come back in your uniform. Bill, read about those black soldiers who came back from World War II, who were lynched in their uniforms, who were shot in their uniforms. They fought for America, but America then turned around and killed them. Bill. School is now over.
it's time for you to go do some damn homework. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.